My name is David Whitaker. Uh, I'm a composer. The compositional aspect uh, of my job is writing for media, writing for film, um, and covering sort of aspects of uh, film uh, that actually needs some audio there as well. So um, just play some music with on, within um, the framework of media, really. I think the best way is to sort of d demo in its own way. Find a friend who writes, who does film, film work or something. Stick some music on his film and then send that to a, a library company. Um, then they'll actually see how the music sort of works within film as well. I started learning the piano probably about the age 10, a uh, bit of guitar as well, and then went through the, the, the sort of the theory, um, the, the sort of the grade system up to grade eight, probably by the time I was 19. I started off at music college learning classical music Classical music was always my sort of forte. That's what I wanted to uh, to be involved in. And then when I got to about 20 years old, I found that there was no money involved in that area of uh, composition. Um, the only area uh, of composition where there was money was television. And so I looked at working within television. Luckily, my best friend had just got a job in the music department of ITV. So one day he uh, said, a job has come up, do you fancy having a go? Um, so I took the job and then, as I said, you know, the director then went, ah, actually, this music's very good, and then passed it on and I got more and more work. The qualifications of a music composer, um, I don't think you actually need them, to be honest. I'd, I've never encountered anybody within the industry asking have I got a degree or have I got A-levels? Um, it's more about the quality of the music and quality of the work. Um, but the thing about being a composer is because you're led by your client, you've got to be incredibly disciplined in the way that you work because you've got to drop things at a moment's notice. Um, they might say, uh, as I've encountered quite often, can I have a piece of music in you know, the next two hours? Um, so you've got to work incredibly quickly um, and also your family's got to be quite supportive and think you know this guy has got to drop everything and uh, get on with the, the work involved. Now there's library companies that produce music um, which will feed sort of things like television so it's a feeding system. The composer feeds the library, then the library feeds uh, television. Um, but there's so much, so many TV stations out there, all needing music. Um, they want it on a very cheap basis as well. So they'll go to the library music company and just choose something off the off the shelf uh, to cover what they want really. You're more focused in a direction now. Somebody will say, "Can I have?" music for um, um, something that's Japanese or something that's Indian, so you, you focus in that direction um, rather than leaving the composer to his own, his own choices, you, you focus um, because of time restraints more than anything else. But uh, it's a, mu a music library is exactly the same as a library that you go to to get your books. It's um, usually companies that have sections of music that you can go to and pull it off the shelves. You just throw as much music as you possibly can to these companies um, of, uh, and as many genres as possible then you, you cover all your options um, but the fact is you just throw it out the company and hopefully they'll pick it up. So they'll take the music and have a listen to it and think, no, actually, that'd be perfect for a bread advert. And so then it'll be, you know, put on file as a bread advert music. Um, so it's much easier for them and it's much easier for the client as well. It's, it's a very quick process. Rather than waiting for a composer to write the music for three weeks, 
can actually go to a shelf and pull it off and put it to the film. The financial sort of system within the libraries, um, what happens is you supply the, uh, the music to the library, they'll pay uh, a small amount for usage, probably 5%, 10%. Uh, and the rest they'll take themselves. But the fact is, hopefully, you know, if if your music is used on a global level, five percent is you know is quite good in its own way. You'd rather have five percent than no percent. So the, that's what happens. To make a sustainable living out of music, you've got to try as many genres as possible and write in as many genres as possible. Try a bit of grime, try R&B, try classical, drum and bass, everything. Because hopefully, you know, some of this might be used. I usually find that people in documentaries want things very quickly. Um, because they need to piece things together um, in such a way that they'll need music. Uh, a, a very fast turnover. They, they found out that there's something missing within the documentary uh, and they want the music now so they can lay it in. The TV industry generally needs things at a very fast, fast rate because um, the fact is music is always the last thing to be put on. The, everything's done, everything's more or less completed uh, and then you lay the music to the finished product generally. Um, in the olden days, they give you clips of when I say olden days, you know, 20 years ago, they give you clips and then you put the music to the clip. But now you generally get a finished product which you can choose, you know, there's a bit of music should be laid in there, music should be laid in here. Uh, and then you liaise with the director um, and he'll say, that's right, that's a good place to put the music or I need more music here uh, so I can have it quickly and that, that's the way it works. Nowadays it's, it's quite easy because you have sample libraries where you can sort of you know put things together from sort of loops and all that type of thing but say 20-30 years ago you had to sort of if you got asked to do an Egyptian piece of music you had to sort of like ring people up to get some the studio and sort of get all the musicians assembled write the stuff on paper uh, but now it's much easier. Uh, the perks of the composer are really that you, you've got your own time. Time's my own. I'm not sort of like restricted to going in at nine o'clock or you know nine well five. I can start at ten o'clock. Um, and also, sometimes you'll find out that you're composing. Somebody might want a five-second piece of music, which takes you know five seconds. Um, so the rest of your day is free. So that's the main main sort of perk of the job. You you your own boss. To keep your eye on the ball, to, to be able to do anything really at a moment's notice. Um, within sort of say documentaries, it it might be that you need to do some Egyptian music. It might be you need to do some um, Japanese flute music. Uh, You've got to be able to do these things incredibly quickly, um, and let the sort of let the director know that there's going to be no problems. Sort of appease anybody and appease the whole system, and just produce the stuff and then make everybody's life easy. That trust is sort of in, in, it's imperative. Um, it also builds up a, a relationship in that you know if you work with a certain director. And he knows that you're going to sort of come up with the, the work properly and quickly and to, to a good standard and he'll use you again um, and then he'll probably talk to another producer or whatever and then the whole thing starts snowballing. Mm -hmm.